Well, Motaz joins us now live in the studio. Really good to see you. Thank you for coming and speaking to us. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me today. How are you? And I, and I don't just mean this in, a, in, a, in passing you in the corridor sense. I mean, how are you? Because obviously you've been through a lot and things have changed for you. Uh, when you ask Motaz how, how, are, how is he, uh, like you are asking every single Palestinian who's living in Gaza right now, how is he? So uh, it's difficult for me to tell you how I, I am, how I feel, okay. uh, because if you ask every Gazan how he feel, uh, you'll hear different answers. But it's the situation of every single Gazan right now. You don't know. Yeah, I mean, someone who lost, it, lost, lost his home, lost his life, lost his future, uh, lost his city, now living in a tent, couldn't, cannot find something to eat, uh, losing a lot of uh, his people. Yeah. And so how do you expect, and what do you expect to hear? Yeah. Uh, it's not, it's, it's not going to be any, a good answer, but uh, we are not okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and obviously a lot of people have been following the war unfiltered through your coverage and you've garnered a huge social media following understandably and um, I, I just wanted to pick up on a tweet about um, that you where you mentioned not a few days ago about content and about um, about how the content that you publish is used by social media I think we can we can bring that tweet up now if we can here it is and I just noticed that you tweeted this a, f a few days ago and I was just wondering what your, what, if you could just expand on this for us, particularly the bit where it says, um, everybody's trying to pull me to his side. Nobody cares about me as a person. They just see me as content to get more reach. Do you feel like maybe in some ways some people are trying to exploit what you've been doing in Gaza? Uh, actually, yes, to be honest. Uh, maybe they're seeing what has maybe because I, I need to talk to more people, to meet more people. To, uh, to, uh, to speak up and uh, deliver their realities that the world saw through my stories and through, uh, through my pictures, mm -hmm. but even like to, to do more. Believe me, like I did my best and no one is asking me now to, to continue. Everyone like asking me, Motaz, take a risk or something. Uh, but for me, I, I can't. I, uh, I have now the guilt feeling that because I survived, and uh, like wearing uh, good clothes, yeah. Uh, just like because uh, I'm talking to the world, I, I I need the world to understand that we are the same. We are humans. Yeah. We're fighting for freedom against this occupation. So um, when people talk to me, like they are talking from, to me personally, they care about me more than what is happening there. So I appreciate this, but thank you. I. Uh, I didn't, I didn't do this or uh, I didn't choose to do this, actually. I did this just for, for, my, for my home, mm. my country. Well, well, I read that you never, intend, you never wanted to be a war photo journalist. I you, you just wanted, you wanted to take you know, nice pictures of Gaza. I used to take a lot of nice pictures of Gaza. And uh, I like the, the, have the dream that to be like a traveler photographer, yeah. take beautiful pictures for the different cultures around the world. And I was besieged in Gaza. I uh, don't have any opportunity to travel and I try to make my best to do uh, to make a great pictures for Gaza even it's yeah. like I was like sad place even before the war yeah because I, in the same year in the same year before the war the, the last May there was a aggression for five day, uh, days yeah I, and I cover it but no one cares in 2021 I covered the war but nobody saw it so I, uh, we just like not the content. I'm not the content. What is happening, guys? It's not our content for you. We are not, yeah, I'm telling you what is happening. For waiting for your likes or views or shares. No, we're waiting for you to act. Hmm. We, not, we need to stop this war. Yeah. So. Uh, and what and what comes next? Because we were just listening to Noir there, um, a Gazan, and she was saying that there is no hope anymore. That we are just a game. But it sounds like you are still clinging on to hope. That even when hopefully or if or when a ceasefire comes beyond that there, there there will be better times no never never see the pictures behind 
the whole God, all the strip got destroyed. Mm. We don't believe that there is still a hope for a better future in Gaza. We lost all our old days, the days before the war, our life, our future, our past, our friends, our home city. Can uh, it not be re rebuilt? Is there not a way for even even, okay, even if it may take a decade? Let, let's say like uh, we are the war stop and uh, internationals will rebuild Gaza. Yeah. It's not about the places, it's about the people we lost. Okay, we can, we can rebuild the places, yeah. but who will give us back the people we lost? How you, how you dare to go to a place that you used to, to hang out there with, with your friends, with your family, that you lost them in the war? How you, you will dare to, yeah, to act like normal, something that just like a war for 100 and maybe 50 days, I hope, of, I don't know. I don't want even to say more numbers. I, do, I don't want it to, to continue after us. But um, how you all dare to do to live a normal life after this, after yeah. a genocide? Yeah. And uh, I understand because the memories are attached to that place, right? And it's the yeah. most documented genocide ever. <laughs> you yeah. all like saw your videos in 4K and uh, a live shows. Yeah. Yeah, just like a spot of life. Yeah. We don't. We don't want your likes. We don't want your shares. We don't, no, just like sp spread the truth and go act, go protest. I know, like people asking me, what should we do? Why are you asking me what to, to tell you what to do? Mm. I'm the one who's there, who's dying there. Yeah. You, you should know better. Yeah. So, I mean, that's quite a bleak outlook for a lot. Of, do you want to go back yourself, given what you've just said? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know actually. I don't know what to say more. It's, it's enough. Nothing changed. I'm trying my best. Yeah. I, I I dreamed about like traveling the world just for my art, for my photography. I'm now traveling the world to try to make a pressure, to make no, noise, to stop this. Yeah. Stop this, this. This moments where me, I'm talking to you yeah. and people are watching, there's a people getting killed by Israel in Gaza Strip. Every moment, every minute, there's at least, at least, at least like 10 person from Gaza Strip are getting killed. If and and, and do, you think, do you think the media is doing a good enough job of, of within, the, within the restrictions that the Israelis place, do you think that the media is doing a good enough job of telling that when you're not there? You, you, can, you can cover what is happening there, even if the bro israelis media outlets that was always like calling what is happening there, not a genocide, it's a conflict. Yeah. Like it's like uh, you're inside of one country and it's like a conflict between, between the people. Uh, no one can because... This time, it's, it's different. We made a change, and the word, the people of the world under, understood well what is happening there. Mm. And the people who are choosing not to, to, to see the truth because they are non-humans. Mm. So uh, they are now, okay, doing their job, uh, but in the end, I mean, they are stick with being with uh, Israel because Israel has the power. Yeah. And the moment, <clears throat> I keep saying this in every place I go, the moment the Palestinian want to, to defend himself, they call him a terrorist. Mm. The moment Israel kills Palestinians, Israel have the right to, to defend mm. herself. Mm. So uh, I hope this will change. And just finally, how is life for you in Qatar? Because obviously you've, you've lost a lot of family, a lot of friends, and you're not there anymore. How, how is life in Doha? It's beautiful. I hope God yeah, he keep it in peace because uh, I didn't know that I'm going to Qatar mm. even. But Qatar is the only country that says, told me you are welcome to come to Qatar. Mm. So thank them. Okay. Yeah. So and uh, I'm doing my best. Even like I, I'm now in Istanbul. Uh, why it's like Doha, uh, Qatar, Turkey? Because it, for me, uh, for us as the Gazan, as Palestinians. Turkey and uh, Qatar are the only countries that welcome the Palestinians as uh, humans from the world. Mm. You won't travel anywhere else, this, do you think? I'm trying to travel. I'm oh, just okay. the, the visa thing, it's so hard to sure. get. So I'm trying to get the necessary visas, visas so I can uh, reach more people, talk mm. to them in different countries, different cultures. Uh, my hope was to do photography, but now like, I have my camera, but I don't take pictures. I'm yeah. speaking more. Yeah, because I just the moment the war stop, I will go back to take pictures. But sure. uh, I don't know, you just like a random guy. 
like the, anyone in, in the world who wants to live in peace and has his own freedom country. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much for coming in and speaking to us. Thank you. I really thank appreciate so it. I understand it's a difficult time. And I know you've won this award, um, it, but for you, it's, it's about the people in Palestine, isn't it? So thank you for speaking to us. Really appreciate your time, Martin. Thanks so much, Charlie.